So good afternoon, all, good morning, all of you. <laughs> Let me start from the point uh, where we left uh, in the last <coughs> class. We are discussing on the chemical vapor deposition. So so far we have discussed the deposition of uh, polycrystal silicon semiconductor films and dielectric films using CVD technique, chemical vapor deposition technique. Now we will discuss on the deposition of metal films using CVD technique. Earlier in VLSI process, metallization is done normal by deposition which is physical vapor deposition that is done by resistive heating or electron beam evaporation or sputtering. Sputtering is widely accepted technique for metal deposition in VLSI contacts and interconnects. But sputtering has got certain problem because of that CVD has come into the picture in metallization scenario also. What is the problem with sputterization? The problem mainly is the step coverage and nowadays in submicron VLSI the aspect ratio is extremely high. That means the feature size is low obviously device feature size is low and the contact over the source drain or even in bipolar cases emitter base collector contact area are very small and the depth means you are opening a contact window in a insulator film the silicon dioxide. The thickness of the silicon dioxide that is the depth if you open contact window on oxide and the area of the contact that means that distance and the vertical depth of the dielectric film that aspect ratio is becoming high. That means that windows are not completely filled by metal film which is conformal in nature. That is a step coverage. The lot of steps will be there at the end of the processes where you are going to going for metallization. Those step coverage problem I will address again in metallization class in detail. But here since I am discussing CVD, so that is why I mentioned that point why in CVD metal CVD is coming into picture. That means nowadays people are trying to get metal deposition using CVD technique which is, was not there in earlier VLSI process. It is a recent addition because of certain advantages and that advantages particular in submicron VLSI. Now those points I will address now. Now you see for deep submicron devices the step coverage of the sputter deposited films into increasingly high aspect ratio features are not acceptable unless very high temperatures are used. And earlier in sputter deposition step coverage is better than the physical deposition by evaporation. Evaporation method we deposit metals either electron beam or resistive heating evaporation and then the technique came into the picture is the sputtering. There what we do? We increase the substrate temperature so that the metal atoms will be mobile on the surface of the substrate and they will diffuse and fill the contact holes and step will be covered. So that was the technique. Now if the aspect ratio is high then to improve the step coverage that means to cover the steps completely we have to raise the temperature of the substrate. If the substrate temperature is very high that is also not good because that will affect the underlying device, underlying layers. Okay? That is why uh, without increasing much the substrate temperature, you can deposit the metals with complete coverage that is done with the help of CVD. And side walls are carefully tapered during edge process to ensure coverage of the metal over the contact. It requires cap which reduces wiring density. What do you mean by this? 
statement. Actually, when we open contact window, the window walls are tapered. The tapering is being done because of the complete coverage of the contact windows. That means step. And if you make tapered of the windows, then what will happen? It will take larger area. If you make tapering size, I, in the next diagram, I will show you what do you mean by taper and what is the vertical wall. Instead of vertical wall, you have to make taper in the side walls. So, it will take larger contact window and that will affect the density, wiring density. So, that is another problem with the conventional metallizing using sparkling technique. And in submicron devices, submicron VLSI process, if the wiring density is not high, then you cannot get advantage of high density circuits, is not it. Now, the metal CVD offers vertical contact structure without requirement of cap. Cap is required in submicron a VLSI design for step coverage in metallization using sputtering technique, but here you may get rid of that. Excellent step coverage, low substrate temperature deposition because technique is CVD chemical vapor deposition, here substrate temperature you may not increase to a high level, high density interconnect is possible. These are the key features of metal CVDs. Vertical contact structure without requirement of cap, excellent step coverage, low substrate temperature deposition and high density interconnect. These are the features. Okay. Now, I will show you the what do you mean by the cap and what is the vertical wall deposition. Some schematic drawing I am showing now. So, here in this structure you can see this one is the conventional sputtering technique and the right hand side this is the CVD metal CVD technique. Now, this is a contact window and in the contact window in order to get step coverage, complete step coverage, you have seen the side walls are tapered, it is not vertical, is not it? It is tapered and because of the tapered, so you need the high substrate temperature to cover this complete plug. Okay. The walls are not vertical. Now, you see this is the contact and in the top surface this is oxide and below is the silicon. And there you have to increase the area of the contact like here, you see here, this is a metal line and since you have to increase the contact window size in order to have this step coverage that is known as a cap. Just like a cap here, this is a metal line and here is a device where you want to make a contact. So, that particular region the, the area of the metal cover is more compared to the interconnect lines. So, this is the interconnect lines and this is the contact area. So, now here you have to have larger allow larger space in order to complete coverage of the contact because that size is more and you have made the window taper, is not it. So, now if you allow this sort of uh, the cap, so that means this, this line and this line may not be very close to each other. So, because of the cap, you have to allow larger gap between one interconnect line to other inter interconnect line and for this reason you cannot increase the density of metal film. So, that is the problem. Now, in the, in the right hand side is a metal CVD technique, you see directly you have, you, you, you have etched a plug. So, this is the plug, the walls are vertical and in CVD technique, the plug will be completely filled by metal film. And because of that, you can see here the two side by side metal lines, this is the contact point here and here is the contact point 
contact window point and there is no cap. This line and this line does not require any cap and because of that you can keep these interconnect lines very close to each other and for that you get higher density of the interconnect lines. So that is the effect of metal CVD. Now on SM picture of the CVD tungsten plug I will show you here this is a some experimental device here. The, the plug is the this is scanning electron microscope picture cross sections picture you see the plug is filled with metal completely filled and this is the metal how the picture looks nice. This is a tungsten plug tungsten material has been filled. CBD tungsten plug okay this is the picture of a real device how this plug is filled with the tungsten metal. Now metal CVD there are various forms various forms of metal plugs have been developed out of which CVD tungsten plug is most popular that was the first development CVD tungsten after CVD tungsten lot of metal plugs have come up now for example aluminum plug copper plug people are doing research on that and they are successful nowadays but CVD tungsten plug was the first and most popular metal plug uh, metal CVD. Now overall reaction of the tungsten CVD plug is as follows WF6 that is fluoride tungsten fluoride this is the liquid in nature and that since uh, this, uh, this source gas is tungsten fluoride is liquid you need a carrier gas and that carrier gas is hydrogen obviously you need a bubbler arrangement if this is since it is liquid. So the hydrogen is bubbled to WF6 and then it is uh, through a mass flow con controller it uh, enters into the reaction chamber and they are at high temperature not high this is a 300 degree centigrade only this uh, this reaction takes place only at 300 degree centigrade. So there it decomposes so it produces tungsten and 6 HF hydrogen fluoride the hydrogen fluoride will be gaseous and that will uh, uh, exhaust and the W is the tungsten metal film and that will deposit on the plug or line or on the surface of the uh, silicon substrate okay. Now uh, this layer of tungsten there is one problem this layer of tungsten which is coming up from this decomposition reaction of tungsten fluoride that tungsten could block the IR radiation from the coils that heat the wafers for substrate heating you need uh, the, the infrared radiation arrangement. So in IR radiation so from where the IR radiation is coming to hit the substrate the tungsten may block those portions as a result of which the substrate will not be heated and if the substrate heating is required for good uniformity and reproducibility of the metal films so that will be hampered if the IR radiators are blocked by tungsten film okay. So, for that reason people have tried cold wall reactor system. So in order to avoid that problem nowadays tungsten CVD is carried out in cold wall reactors. Cold wall reactors you know what is cold wall reactors what is its advantage I am not mentioning again those advantages. So now uh, uh, there are other points on metal CVD. One of the problem of the tungsten plug CVD is it does not adhere well with the substrate adherence is not good. So to improve the adherence of the film you have to use certain adhesion prompter some other material 
that is common in metallization process you will see when i discussed metallization multi level metallization or multi layer metallizations so there are certain class of metals which do not adhere well sticking coefficient is very poor with the silicon or silicon dioxide surface for that you need help of certain material and that material will help sticking of that metal film with the substrate in case of cvd tungsten that film is either titanium tungsten or titanium nitride or tantalum nitride so this titanium nitride is one material which is used in microelectronics vlsi area in different cases so that will behave not like an insulator so titanium nitride uh, resistivity is not very high obviously it is more than pure aluminum or gold but it has got higher conductivity compared to other uh, dielectric film so titanium nitride or titanium tungsten that may be spotted before deposition cvd deposition of tungsten and that film is of less thickness maybe 50 angstrom to 100 angstrom thickness so that will help and that will uh, help the pouring of the plugs using the tung cvd tungsten and uh, next point is other area of metal cvd research are silicides for gate electrode metal cvd is still in research area lot of scope is there for finding its application and improving the metal cvd techniques silicides for gate electrode in cmos uh, the metal cvd is used for making gates particularly silicided gate cmos transistor local interconnect tungsten adhesion layers cvd copper cvd aluminum copper metallization is coming nowadays very recently people are thinking to use the copper as a interconnect material because all of you know the copper has got higher conductivity than aluminum but till then it was not used because of certain problem corrosion problem is one of the major problem of the copper so because of that uh, people earlier tried to avoid those materials but with certain innovations and techniques and they can use the copper nowadays in plsa metallization that will address separately in metallization class copper metallization and there too people are trying to deposit the copper using cvd and aluminum also they are trying till now spattered aluminum film is very much popular in vlsi metallization in industrial environment but nowadays the cvd aluminum are in research stage and if it succeeds well and that may that may go into the industrial line of vlsi fabrication cvd aluminum and cvd copper now what are the reaction mechanism in the metal cvd system let us see and in ti titanium nitride cvd the reaction is titanium chloride as a, a reactant gas and nh3 is ammonia so that ammonia and titanium chloride they react in vapor phase and it will form tin titanium nitride plus hcl plus nitrogen and the reaction temperature is 400 to 700 degree centigrade that is the titanium nitride cvd next comes copper cvd and their reaction is cuhfac whole twice plus h2 hydrogen as a carrier gas here and this cuhfac twice decomposes to cu plus twice h hfac that is in 350 to 450 degree centigrade aluminum cvd reaction is aluminum hydride at 
200 to 300 degree centigrade decomposes and it gives rise to aluminum and hydrogen that is the the reaction mechanism of aluminum CBD and the aluminum hydride is obtained from decomposition of triisobutyl aluminum TIBA. TIBA is a triisobutyl aluminum. The aluminum hydride as such is not available that hydrides of aluminum is not common the source gas, but it is obtained from TIBA. Okay. Similarly, for copper CUFHAC whole twice is basically it is a copper hexafluoroacetonate, copper hexafluoroacetonate. So, this will be HF not FH, some mistake is there, HF, okay. the HF, HF is a hexafluoro. CUHFAC whole twice is copper hexafluoroacetonate. Okay. Now, due to the grain structure, electromigration and junction spiking are much less severe in CBD aluminum. At this moment, you may find difficulty to understand this particular statement, but it will be clear when I will discuss the electromagration and junction spiking problems in metallization and those points I will address in metallization class. Okay. And this electromagration and junction spiking, those are the failure mechanisms in metallization and there are a lot of research going on to get rid of this problem in VLSA metallization and those problems are dependent on the grain size of the molecules of the metals and in CVD the grain size grain structure is different from the deposited evaporated metal film and spartan deposited metal film and because of that the grain structure change it has been observed that electromigration failure or junction spiking failure mechanisms are not severe in metal CVD. These are the prospects of the metal CVD reactions. Okay. Now, uh, these are the recent trends of CVD applications in metals I discussed. Now, in CVD chemical vapor deposition, another technique is there which is very recent one. Although it was used quite a long time, but with the improvement now this particular technology known as MOCVD is used widely in compound semiconductor or alloy semiconductor materials. Not the elemental semiconductor, but alloy semiconductors. Alloy semiconductors, one is silicon germanium you know, group 4 silicon and germanium together they are making the alloy semiconductors for making heterostructure devices which can give very high speed transistors and high speed circuit people are using these heterostructure devices and others are conventional, the alloy semiconductors are the compound semiconductors basically. That is gallium arsenide or gallium aluminum arsenide for deposition, single crystal deposition of these the compound semiconductor materials, MOCVD, metallo organic chemical vapor deposition technique is very much popular. So, let us discuss little bit on this particular MOCVD topic. So, MOCVD, it is basically a CVD technique to deposit dielectric as well as single crystal semiconductor film and in particular compound semiconductors, silicon based alloy semiconductors and compound semiconductors. And also this technique is used to deposit dielectric film, okay. MOCVD, metallo organic chemical vapor deposition. MOCVD uses a metal organic vapor, vapor, uh, vapor which is the source gas metal organic compound that is decomposed or reacts with other reactants to form the desired film. Okay. 
the excitation is generally thermal but can also be plasma assisted in general mocbd uses thermal excitation that means you have to have a furnace well controlled furnace whose temperature can be controlled accurately so that is thermal excitation but it could be plasma assisted also and in case of gallium arsenide organometallics used in mocbd are tmg trimethyl gallium and ash3 arsine metal organic films are normally available in liquid form high purity liquid form are the normal sources are the for metal organic compounds and there you need a carrier gas and you need a bubbler arrangement so that through mass flow controller you can you can uh, those gases source gases are entered into the reaction chamber those are flown into the chamber and their reaction takes place and i'll show you uh, the reaction mechanism and the schematic of AMOCVD system. The gallium T trimethyl gallium TMA, this is GACH3 whole trice is a TMA trimethyl gallium. It decomposes with hydrogen at higher temperature and it gives rise to gives rise to GAHCH3 whole twice on intermediate compound and CH3. And ASH3, the arsine with CH3, it will form ASH2 plus CH4. Now, this ASH2 and GAHCH3 holds twice, these two intermediate compounds, they will react together and they will form gallium arsenide. GAH, CH3 hold twice and ASH3 diffuse independently on the surface until they come into contact. The methyl group reacts with the hydride yielding gallium arsenide, hydrogen and CH4. Major problem of this emulsivity reaction is the carbon contamination because you see one of the byproduct of this reaction is CH4, the methane gas which is the hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen is there. So, from there, there is a chance of carbon contamination into the film. Okay? So, this is the basic principle of how we can grow semiconducting film, compound semiconducting film using MOCVD technique. Okay? Now, I will show you a schematic of this MOCVD reactors. Here, as I told you that the source gases, source uh, of these reactant sources are liquid. So, you need a carrier and at the same time carrier gas and you need at the same time you need a bubbler arrangement. This is the bubbler arrangement and it is kept in a bath and uh, the source gas that is T trimethyl gallium TMG liquid is kept in this small bubbler and here the carrier gas hydrogen there are two lines one is hydrogen other is nitrogen. So, the nitrogen through mass flow controller that is pressure valve is a gas pressure valve and through this controller they are they are uh, through this path and through this path it is coming here and through the bubbler it bubbled and the gas along with the carrier gas they are flown into the chamber through different valves here to the manifold means directly it enters into the reaction chamber. That means this is the source and these are the bubbler arrangements, uh, bubbler carrier gas arrangements, hydrogen or nitrogen those are the gases 
depending on which gas you need you can use it for because this, this uh, whole unit is for either for dielectric deposition or for semiconducting film sometimes if you need nitride you may require nitrogen or ammonia so anyway those are uh, through the bubbler it flows this is the outlet and directly it goes into the chamber so this is the inside the chamber the configuration are more or less cvd reactor configuration and there again is coming these hot wall cold wall reactors horizontal reactor vertical reactors those are common like other cases okay so this in a nutshell i gave you some exposure on mocvd technique by which we can deposit either dielectric films or semiconducting films alloy or metal semiconductors now uh, let me uh, conclude this cvd chapter by saying that major requirements for the present vlsi processes are low processing temperatures to prevent movement of shallow junction that is the trend low process temperatures because all all uh, the submicron devices uses shallow junction uniform step coverage of our anisotropically etched features that is another major requirements few process induced defects defects should be as minimum as possible and high wafer throughput to reduce cost that means the whole process must be cost effective okay so all those parameters are mostly all those requirements are mostly met by low pressure deposition techniques either chemical or plasma assisted the advantages of cvd reactors are mainly improved uniformity automation and reproducibility in addition to the requirements demands of the present vlsi process which are mentioned here though in addition to those fulfillment cvd reactors has other advantages those are improved uniformity automation and reproducibility the r and d on dielectric and polysilicon film deposition in ulsi applications can have important impacts in other fields as well like displays optoelectronics microsensors and bioelectronics so in those areas bioelectronics or optoelectronics area cvd is a very useful tool for deposition of various films maybe metal or maybe dielectric or maybe polycrystal silicon film and cvd is now a widely accepted tool in all vlsi technology vlsi processes okay now i will spend some time on solving some of tutorial problems on this epitaxy or cvd or chemical vapor depositions okay now i prepared few tutorial problems for you the first problem is here calculate the growth rate of a silicon film grown from sicl4 at 1250 degree centigrade the gas phase mass transfer coefficient of the reactor is 5 cm per second ks is equal to 5.18 cm per second ng is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 16 per cc also you calculate the average boundary layer width if the reynolds number of the susceptor is 1500 and the susceptor length is 20 cm this is the problem based on silicon 
film growth from SiCl4 silicon tetrachloride in vapor phase epitaxy technique using vapor phase epitaxy technique. Okay. And here one term Reynolds number, this is basically a number which uh, this uh, parameter is coming in fluid dynamics, it is related to the flow whether the, a flow is a uh, laminar flow or turbulent flow depends on the Reynolds number. There is a certain value of the Reynolds number is there below above that the flow will be turbulent and below that below Reynolds number value the it will be laminar flow. So that in all the reactors epitaxial reactors I mentioned earlier so the flow of the reactant gases should be laminar in nature not turbulent in nature. Okay. So that is why Reynolds number is an important parameter in, in reactor and susceptors and susceptor length is also important parameter 20. Now the growth rate is given by the relation Vy equal to Hg Ks divided by Hg plus Ks dot Ng by N that I have derived in growth kinetics in epitaxial reactor. Hg is a gas phase mass transfer coefficient and the gas phase mass transfer coefficient here is given 5 centimeter per second and the uh, Ks is the surface reaction rate constant this is the case and that case value is also given 5 into 10 to the power uh, 5.18 centimeter per second that is the case value given here and Ng is the the number of molecules in gas phase reactant molecules in the gas phase and that is given by 3 into 10 to the power 16 per cc and N is the number of molecules silicon atoms here in this particular case after the epitaxial deposition per unit volume. So that means number of atoms per unit volume in the silicon layer is N that value is 5 into 10 to the power 22 that is atomic density of silicon after deposition that is the value of N atomic density of silicon after deposition that value is 5 into 10 to the power 22. Now if you put all the values Hg case Hg plus case dot Ng by N so that is coming like this and if you solve and it will come in 0.916 micron per minute that is the answer. Okay. And the growth rate this Vy is 0 0.916 micron per minute. And the second part of the problem is the calculate the average boundary layer width if the Reynolds number of the susceptor is 1500 and the susceptor length is 20 centimeter. Okay. That is solved uh, here the average boundary layer width the delta bar is given by 2 third L by under root Re where L is the susceptor length and Re is the Reynolds number. So the boundary layer width is dependent on the two parameter one is the Reynolds number and the length susceptor length here those two parameters are given. L is 20 centimeter and Reynolds number is 1500. So, if you put this values here, so the average boundary layer is 0.344 centimeter. Boundary layer is not constant over the susceptor as you have seen the flow pattern. So, it will be something if this is the susceptor, so boundary layer is something like this. If you go larger distance from this, this side, so boundary layer thickness increases if you go in this side so you see thickness increases this is the boundary layer thickness here is the boundary layer thickness less here is extremely low if the gas flow is in this direction okay so this is the relation of the average boundary layer thickness and that is 2 third l by under root re okay so that is coming 0 0.344 is the average boundary layer thickness so now i I come to the next problem, second problem. Second problem is a really involved problem. You write down the problem. 
that is calculate the growth rate of silicon film grown from again SICL4 source at 1200 degree centigrade. The reactor has a Reynolds number, the reactor has a Reynolds number of 20 here and is of 10 centimeter length. The reactor length is 10 centimeter. Diffusivity and concentration of reactants in gas phase are 8 centimeter square per second and 3 into 10 to the power 16 atoms per cc. Surface reaction rate constant is given by 10 to the power 7 exponential minus Ea by Kt, where Ea and K are 1.9 electron volt per atom, Ea is activation energy and K is the Boltzmann constant that is given by 8.62 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt per degree Kelvin. That means Ea value is given, K value is given, the temperature is 1200 degree centigrade, but here this T is in absolute scale and the exponential minus Ea by Kt when it is multiplied by 10 to the power 7 then it will give the surface reaction rate constant which is Ks. So, in this particular problem you have to find the value of Ks, small Ks that is surface reaction rate constant. This value is not given, you have to find from this relation. Okay. And the part B of this problem is what is the change of growth rate if the constant, if the reaction temperature is increased by 1%. And the growth rate is highly sensitive on temperature, reactor temperature that I mentioned when I discussed the epiaxial reactor. And I derived on relation also for calculating the growth rate variation with temperature. Okay. So, now here that will this problem if you solve you will have a feeling that how it is sensitive with the temperature variation. Only 1 percent temperature variation we have to see what is the growth rate variation. Now, let us try to solve the first part of the problem and in the first part of the problem solution are, solutions are, is given here. So, we are given dg, what is the dg? Gas diffusivity that is 8 centimeter square per second, Ng is given 3 into 10 to the 16 per cc, Ea is 1.9 electron volt per atom, K naught which is 10 to the power 7, K Boltzmann constant 8.62 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt per degree, this, this is per degree K. Okay and T is 1250 degree centigrade. Okay. Now, the case relation we know, case is equal to K naught exponential minus Ea by Kt. So, there you put the values, Ea is known, Ea is known here, Kt, K is here, this K, T is 1250 plus 275 that is 1523. Now, you put all these values and the case is coming 5.18 centimeter per second. K s is equal to K naught exponential minus E a by K t. Okay. So, case once K s is found then you can calculate just like other problem, you can calculate the VOI provided Ag is given, Ag and Ng. Okay. Now, the, now you have to calculate the gas phase mass transfer coefficient Ag that is also not given, but you have to calculate. This Ag is given by dg divided by delta bar. Dg is given, Dg value is given 8 centimeter square per second. Dg is uh, 
8 centimeter square per second that is diffusivity of the reactants in gas phase. Diffusivity of the reactants in the gas phase is given that value is 8 centimeter square per second. Now, in order to calculate Ag, you need delta bar that is average boundary layer thickness. That delta bar is equal to 2 by 3 L by under root Re. L is the length of the susceptor is given 20 centimeter, a uh, 10 centimeter, and Reynolds number is given 20. So now you can easily calculate delta bar, average boundary layer thickness. That delta bar is equal to 1.49 centimeter. Once you find the delta bar, then put this delta bar into this equation. Dg value is given. Dg is 8, and delta bar you are getting 1.49. So, the Hg gas phase mass transfer coefficient you can easily calculate and that Hg is equal to 5.36 centimeter per second. You got it here 5.36 into 10 to the power uh, into not into 5.36 centimeter per second that is small Hg. Now, once Hg is found in earlier page you have seen how case was determined. So, once Hg and case are known so, V y which is growth rate easily you can calculate that is Hg case divided by Hg plus case into Ng by N. So, all those parameters are now given you can easily substitute those parameters and you can calculate V y which is 1.58 into 10 to the power minus 6 centimeter per second and that is equal to 0.948 micron per minute, 0.948 micron per minute. So, the growth rate is given by 0.948 micron per minute. Now, I am coming to part B. Part B is what? If you change the temperature by 1 percent, what is the growth rate variation? So, there if you change the temperature, what parameter will change? First, K s will change. K s equal to K naught into E to the power minus E A by K T. So, temperature changes, K s will change. So, that we have to first calculate how, how much is the variation in case. Now, here the case change is calculated here. Case equal to 10 to the power 7 exponential minus 1.9, 8.36, 10 to the power minus 5 and here it is 1536. If you increase temperature by 1 percent, that temperature will be 1536 Kelvin. That is in Kelvin scale. The temperature was given 1250 degree centigrade. So, from 1250 degree centigrade 1 percent change how much it is then you add with that 273. So, then it will be in Kelvin 1536. Now, their case is coming 5.86 centimeter per second. Once you calculate case then other parameters are not dependent on temperature. So, other parameters are fixed. So, now if you put the value of case you will be getting 1.68 into the minus 6 centimeter per second that is Vy equal to 1.008 micron per minute. Now, change in the growth rate is given by 1.008 minus 0 0.948 divided by 0 0.948 into 100. So, 6.33 percent. So, now we got the variation of growth rate is 6.33. So, for 1 percent change in temperature 6.33 percent variation in the growth rate. So, it is highly sensitive on temperature. Okay? So, let me stop now.